Boom shots the people love you, love you. You play with rhythm and style. The plates that'll make the people, make them dance, make them smile. For there's no other station who can play like you. Christopher Ellis saying boomshots.com, endorsed by me. Yours sincerely, yours truly. Son of the Godfather, Alton Ellis. <laughs> Boom! So we're here with Chris Ellis. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Reshma. Great right now. In the studio, chilling, vibes, Guinness, and ganja. <laughs> <laughs> Let it all out. So you retweeted one of my tweets yesterday. I got a wicked picture of you on stage at the Indigo O2. Yeah, I woke up and saw that this morning and I thought, yeah, this can, this can get a retweet. Retweet this. We like that. You know? Nice. Nice vibe yesterday at the show, you know? You that know. was a wicked set, by the way. You've thanks. I appreciate that. Um, it's coming together now slowly. You know, for me, it's coming together now slowly, and we're building songs and building like, the catalog of songs. So, you know, whereas before I would do two songs on sh on stage, now I can do more. You know, so it was nice. And and yesterday, collectively, I was so happy. You know, with how everything came with the whole crew. You know, away from my set, the whole crew, the whole thing was just perfect, perfect shillings. Yeah. All the dog, the Murphy. You did the Willow Tree and all of that, but then you came out with your track, yeah. the Don't Change My Number. Yeah. <laughs> like you did a lot of like very unusual stuff, stuff that isn't really so typical reggae. Yeah, and you know that's that's the direction I want to go in right now. And you know it's always nice when people can't predict, you know what's what's coming, like as in as in for a release of a song or even like a performance. They can't predict what's next, and it's nice. I'm trying to go in that direction where, you know, it's not a full man, like, okay, this, 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 where they can say, okay, you know. So change up the thing, different style, mood, come back to that again, go there, so, you know, that I kind of feel there, so it's great, so, you know. And they say it's showing the versatility as well, let me say, so that's also a good thing as well, you know. But yeah, don't change the number. It's getting a lot of attention right now, and we're really excited about that song there. Don't change the number. Yeah, I mean, where did it come from? Well, you know, I was in, um, I was in Tough Kong Studio, actually, you know, with a gang and we just there vibes in and you know, just vibes come and I just hum two things and gang say, Yeah, keep that and we just build bill and and the song was there. We took it back to Miami and completed the song. Gong did his genius thing he does and that's what you have the problem. Which is what? Boy he goes behind when he goes behind that, 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 that drum kit, you know, and does all his thing and orchestrates the thing. It's crazy. Crazy. And thing. that was don't don't change your number. Don't change your number. Don't change your number. It's really gang. Why that song is well exists, you know, yeah, and I'm so proud of it. It's nice, different, you know, different mood, dun, 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 different mood, niceness, yeah. And the lyrics, yeah, the lyrics, we just <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics, the lyrics are nice, they come together nice as well. We just put lyrics in line by line and make sure that the pattern was good, you know. And it just, boy, well, I can't even say this, it's come together so perfectly, you know, come together so perfectly. We started it in Jamaica. Finished it in Miami, and don't change your number. <laughs> Mad. Let's talk about the Ghetto Youth Crew. You're yeah. part of that now. Mm. Well, how did that whole thing come about with you? Yeah, well, you know, say, um, it's a, you know, it's like a lineage thing, and you know? I think it stems back to more than when just when I met Stephen. It's more than that, you know. It stems back to you know our our father's thing and the whole trench down thing, you know. Cause my father trench down, Bob Marley trench down, and then when I met music, them times they were just making songs religiously, and you know, when you have a father like that and greatness is passed down onto you, so, you know, it, I think it's from, like, that kind of ordained kind of angle I'm coming from. It was there, you know, and then after my, my father passed now, I was in Jamaica, 
and Stephen. I met, I met, I met Stephen and the thing was just perfect, come together perfect, you know. Someone said to me, yo, I take care of Stephen Marley, you know. My brother named Cooley, he's from Trenchdown. They may take care of Stephen Marley, you know, them money for their own. So I said, yeah, when you're ready, man. He just drove me there one day to Hope Road, sat down with Stephen Marley and the rest is history, man. Just like that happened. Just like that. Mm. When you talk about your father, I actually saw Alton performing like um, in Rainer's Lane. Like I was so close to him. I mean, obviously he's your dad. You had a different relationship with him. But what are your most like uh, fond memories of him musically, you and him musically? Well, musically, so many things that he taught me, you know. And those times when I was learning, I didn't, I didn't really realize what I was learning. I, I didn't really realize it was a craft I was learning because it was just fun to me, you know. So I would go, you know, there's, there's, there's other things. Like there's one time I was on stage and I'm about to go and sing and, and I, I got this cold bottle of water and I opened it, I'm about to drink it. And he said, no, Christopher, no, Christopher. Can't, can't drink cold, cold drink when you're about to perform, you know. So I thought, okay, learned that, you know. There's so many things I learned from him in the music, but it wasn't a thing that, it, it was subconscious, so I wasn't really, I didn't really realize I was learning. You know, it's just, it's just when he passed, it's like, okay, so these things all coming to me now, I say, okay, I kind of have an idea of what to do now. So, yeah, but there's so many things, so many fun memories, comedy-wise. He was a big, big comedian, my dad. <coughs> Some people might not know that. Big, big comedian, you know? <laughs> and it runs in our family because um, his nephews are comedians to my cousins, Blacker Ellis, that, you know, big comedian in Jamaica. IT from IT and Fancy Cat. Be- no way! I know cousin. him. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, IT is my cousin, you know. So it really, it really is the comedy thing. Really is in our genes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. So yeah, man. So many things. Are so many, so many things. My dad. I, you know, I, I never wanted to leave his side when I was when he was around. I learned so much, and I'm, I give. That's one regret I don't have. To say, oh, I wish I spent more time with him. I did that. So that was good for me, and that's good for me. And had I mean almost instantly you're just like swept away from London and you're now travelling around. Like, mm. how, how does it feel? You're back here in the UK again, this time performing for the Jamaican yeah. Independence anniversary. I mean, how the hell do you feel? Overwhelmed is the main word I have to use, you know. Overwhelmed and I have to say I really, really have to give thanks to the father because he really made this happen for me and you know, to be around such great people like Stephen Marley. There's not anyone that can be around him, man. You understand? Know, Junior Gang. There's not anyone who can come and be around him, man, just like that, man. You know, Stephen said to me, it's family thing, family. And I really give thanks for that. And I'm learning so much from them as well. You know, just being in the studio and, you know, songs and vibes, all kind of things I'm learning. So it's so nice. But it's nice to, you know, I deal with the travelling thing good because because I know that it's something I'm setting. It's like mm-hmm. it's, it's like a part two of a legacy. It makes it easy to be away, you know. P- people say, "Oh, how do you um, how do you do it?" And all those weeks and months away from home, but it's it's a mission, you know. It's a mission of 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 an extended legacy, and and anything that I can add to that legacy. So that's what takes away the whole, you know, because it's a, it's like a yeah, like a mission. So why would you be away from the mission to be maybe in England doing nothing or you know? So it, that makes it easy, you know. Yeah, so that's how I deal with it. That's how I deal with it.